I'm Stuart McConey, and I'm really delighted to welcome to the studio now our special guest tonight, Tori Amos. Hello. Hello, Stuart. How has touring been? Has it been fun, rigorous, exhausting? It's a high. Yeah. It's all that, but it's it's a huge endorphin rush when you get out in front of the people who've come to the shows and you see them and you feel their electricity. It's a, It's magical. And you've got your little girl with you, Tash. How's she taking to it? Well, she's um, she's becoming very enterprising. She takes mommy's flowers that get sent by the promoter or by the house or the record company and then she sells them off backstage so she doesn't have to buy them and then she makes money on them. So we're calling her Tash Trump. <laughs> <laughs> and this is her fourth world tour, is that right? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So she's she must be the most well-travelled seven-year-old on earth. Oh, she's an old hand at it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, we'll talk in a moment about uh, the fascinating new record. So much to talk about it, American Doll Posse, but uh, how about we hear a song first? Okay. This is um, from the new record, and Clyde normally sings this. <laughs> Beauty of speed. 
That's Beauty of Speed from the new Tori Amos record, American Doll Posse, sounding fantastic. Thank you very much for that, Tori. Yes. And you said at the beginning there, usually sung by Clyde, so we should explain that American Doll Posse features several protagonists, doesn't it? Not just you. No, there are five included, and they're all different facets of the divine feminine based on Greek mythology, based on some of the major players of the Greek pantheon. So we have Isabel, Clyde, Pip, Santa and Tori. Yes. And on stage each evening, a different one of the posse uh, appears at the beginning. Was that right? That's correct. And then Tori shows up because, of course, she has that big back catalogue. Yes. <laughs> Tori's got the, the, the bigger back catalogue than the others, yeah. Yes, yeah, so she gets to come out second. Or I don't think they'd let her come out. Okay. But they realise they need her. Okay. Are they different bits of you or are they different bits of womanhood? They're different bits of womanhood, but these are the women for me. So if, say, a woman you knew decided to apply, find her Athena, which is Pip. Mm. So you find the warrior in Pip. So when Pip comes out, she wears the rubber <laughs> and she can take anybody on. Not a problem. It's no. just not a problem. No. Now Santa holds Aphrodite. So she's the one with the short white hair. She's Pip the sensualist. Yes, she is. Mm. And do they all get on? They all do get on. They do. They don't. They don't all get on with anybody else. But okay. They all get on together. Okay. Which is kind of necessary since they share a body. Yeah, and a tour bus. And a tour bus, yes. But they yeah. all have their own wardrobe. You see. Yes. They don't have to share that. Okay. Now, it's clearly a record about um, politics and war and women and um, and I'm guessing America more than Britain. Sure. Yeah. yeah. What made you then decide to use this quite complicated device of the different of the different personas and the different psyches? What made you decide to use that as a device to comment about America today and the war and Bush and things like that? I was in shock that at the last election there wasn't a change. Mm. I think, like many people around the world, including quite a few Americans, the forty nine percent were shocked that a change hadn't been made because so much information had been disclosed. So we knew about the lies, we knew about the manipulation, and so therefore to not make that choice makes you think about what is the ability of a think tank to maneuver um, a mass consciousness. And I started thinking of the Christian right wing mm. and their incredible power in the States. As a minister's daughter, I started to analyze it and to wonder, where were the women? Because if the women are just looking at their future for themselves and their daughters, then you can't support a regime that doesn't support them. Mm. So therefore, I started to wonder, where were they? Why were they distracted? And how do we get them to start asking the questions? So I started studying how the Christian right wing divides them and stereotypes them. And I thought, okay, then let's go back pre-Christian because the only way to fight the Christian right wing is with ideology. Their ideology is a male authority figure. So let's bring on the mother gods. It's kind of, as opposed to being divided and rule, it's divide and kind of fight back into these... Um these different, well, compartmentalised, you've said, that, that, that the Christian right and, and patriarchal society has compartmentalised women. I understand how my culture thinks. And I thought it was really important that if we're going to think our, about women, you know, the Christian myth is divided into two. The Mother Mary, who's stripped of her sexuality, or the Magdalene, who has her sexuality but nothing else. Mm. Now, these are the two women in Christian myth. So I thought, let's open the floodgates here and go back where the chicks were powerful. And that's what they don't want. The Christian right does not want a time when the matriarchy was in power. That's not what yeah. they want. Yeah. The songs on American Doll Posse are sung by the different people, by the different um, characters, Isabel, Clyde, Pip, Santa, Tori. Um, that said, it's still very much a Tori Amos record. I mean, you haven't gone to extremes with how different they are. Was it important that it still was a cohesively a Tori Amos record? Well, it's always a, a dangerous tightrope that you walk when you're expanding. Mm. When you're doing a record that's really cohesive and that is a certain sound, such as Scarlet's Walk, that everything is, the instrumentation is very similar song to song, 
that's that's a very different kind of record that you make than when you think the styles need to be different from Teenage Hustling, which was inspired by The Damned, opposed to Rooster Spur Bridge, which is very James Taylor inspired. So I was covering, if I were going to bring on the mother gods, then I went to the rock gods of right. the late 60s and early 70s for the music style. So the doors for Father Son, you know, early David Bowie for Digital Ghost, Rye Cooter for Big Wheel, of course. So, I mean, I was trying to bring on um, the balance of the of the feminine and with the concept, but the males with the music. Yeah. We'll, we'll hear another song from uh, from you in a moment and we'll talk a bit more about the record but I want to just step to one side for one minute because you've brought along something in the section of the show we call Show and Tell which is about a record and an artifact that means something to you and you've brought along here what is this what is this lovely thing? This is a medicine bag A medicine bag? A Native American medicine bag, yes And when did you acquire this? I acquired that during Scarlet's Walk Okay So you were saying to me earlier that pre-success you would take yourself off for weeks at a time into the, the heart of the American wilderness, I guess. Yes. I take a map and I, I've i traversed the whole country. But my favorite drives, I would say, would be going from L.A. I've done Joshua Tree many times and laid out under the stars. And then I've gone on to the Rockies from there, into Colorado, and then made my way down into New Mexico and back through Arizona. And I've done it the opposite way. Yeah. So you go in through um, Navajo country and Hopi country and then into New Mexico and on up to Dallas. And it's it's the people and the landscape that meant a lot to you, is it? Both of those things. Well, of course. I mean, I think when you can really get close to those spiritual people, which isn't always easy, you have to make yourself, I don't know, more contained. You can't come in needy. Yeah, And it's really about learning and, and learning about the culture and observing and not needing to take anything from them. But the land gives you so much and mm. there's so much incredible history that the, that the Native people have there that you don't really learn a lot in the history books. But if you go out and drive, you, you learn a lot. Yeah. And there is, I think, a massive sense of space that really we on this tiny overcrowded island can't, can't really grasp, can we? Well, I must, don't take this wrong, but some of my friends in Cornwall will say to me, oh, you know, it's a long way up to London. And I just think it's the funniest thing ever. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, it's, a little, it's, a, it's a little spit. Yeah, it is, it is, yeah. And it gives you a gives, gives perspective. And the record you've chosen kind of reflects, uh, reflects that, doesn't it? That, that, that sense of space and sense of spirituality, I suppose. What is it? One of my favourite albums of all time is Joshua Tree by U2. It came at a time when it really kind of set a benchmark for me as a songwriter. And, and again, writing about things that matter, that matter to you. And so I know this album means a lot to so many people, but the funny thing is it still means something to me. I can still put it on, and even being a mom now and many years later, you see, I want to get in my car. When I hear anything from Joshua Tree, I'm thinking, okay, I need to get my car and drive now. God's Country by you two from Joshua Tree, chosen by Tori Amos. The, the last time we spoke uh, was when uh, the handsome, gorgeous looking a piano came out. Last year, would that be? Yeah. Yes. The sort of, um, a sort of career summary to date, wasn't it, when that came out? And did it, is this now then a new phase? with American Doll Posse? Well, I don't think I could have made American Doll Posse, which is really about dissecting me, unless I had integrated everything together with a piano. But it took 40-some years. I've been playing now for 42 years. Wow. And so I started at 2, and I'll be 44 this summer. And I, I mean, I'm proud of that fact, because I don't think you want to run away from your age. Mm. And... I never felt better than when I turned 40. It all came together for me. It sounds strange, but almost a new energy. I felt really old in my 30s. And I've told people, women in the music industry, it gets very difficult for you in your 30s. It can, unless you, your first record is in your 30s. Yeah. And that's different. But if you've had a few, you know the game. You're not the ingenue anymore. The new crew's coming up. You're not the new latest car. Yeah, And yet you're not a classic car yet. 
But if you've had nine <laughs> albums and a box set and a few DVDs and, you know, you're a serious road dog and you're 44, then you're a classic car and that's hot. <laughs> so that's, you like to think of yourself as a classic car, don't you? No, I know I am. <laughs> yes. And um, it is an extraordinary thing to take out on tour. I mean, is it quite an elaborate thing to have to do when you've got essentially five of you on tour? Yes, Stuart, but you know, they're changing my life in a good way. You can really get trapped in your own image. Mm. You can. Everybody has an image. The idea that you, I mean, even you do. Everybody has one. Not the one you wake up in your house and nobody sees, yeah. but when we put on our mask to go and face the world, yeah. there's a certain persona that we want people to see. Well, sometimes, you know, you just repeat yourself. And you, you don't explore other sides of the self. And then the people in your family, your friends, you find yourself doing things and agreeing to things. And you kind of say to yourself, wait a minute, I don't really agree with that. Yeah. I'd really love to take that rafting trip. <laughs> yeah. I'd really like to do this thing that everybody says, no, she won't do. Yeah. And you think, wait a minute. Yeah. Th they don't know me that well. What did interest me, though, when I first heard of what you were doing with this record was... Um, there's a lot of people in psychiatry pay a lot of money to get all the different bits of themselves integrated into one containable whole, and you've gone the opposite way around. Well, only when you've pulled it together can you pull it apart. Okay. You know, they're very ancient. They're part of our DNA. Mm. Sometimes we don't think about it in those terms. But if you think about Aphrodite and you close your eyes, I'll be honest with you, in my life, until I did this project, I did not allow a lot of Aphrodite in my life. I've been very harsh about that. Okay. Because I've judged it with the dumb girl. And a tart. I haven't thought of it as just miraculous sensuality that's delicious and highly intelligent, mm. but clever. Yeah. You yeah. know, sometimes you, you can, as women, you, you can be really catty about that kind of stuff. Yeah. And so I needed a bit of Santa in my life. It's done wonders for things with husband. <laughs> He loves her. <laughs> I'll bet. That seems like a cue for you to play another song. Yeah, I get it. Okay. Kisses. 
think I had a message for me from Jesus and I put every word that you and cooling a song of a slightly older vintage than uh, the new record isn't it it was written a long time ago and it made a piano it made the special yeah box. yeah lovely if you're very lucky and uh, you're a bit of a globe trotter you can catch uh, tori and all the rest of the posse uh, still on tour for a while up until uh, the late autumn and um, the album american doll posse is in the shops now a new single big wheel is released on the 30th of july thank you very much tori thank you Stuart.